In a holiday special type of podcast, we're a week away from Christmas, and we got a businessman, entrepreneur, trainer, uh, life-changing coach <laughs> because of what he's in, but we got ourselves AJ in the house, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Long time coming, bro. Yeah, man. I've been seeing your work. It's it's awesome. I love hearing the podcast all the time. <laughs> I appreciate it's, this. It's great. Big fan, man. Yeah, that's why when... When we finally set this up this week, I was telling them, like, hey, like, this dude has, for, like, the longest time already been supporting. Now you're in a new phase of, or new chapter in your life that it's about to change coming in 2022. Yeah, man. But the work starts from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's get right into it. So let's talk about how did you get into this position you're in now? Wow. That's a long story, <laughs> Let's but go I try to it. Co- condense it, man. Yes, so I started in the fitness community at, in 2016. Uh, crazy fun fact. I was at um, LA Fitness. That's where I started. And when I started there, I just did it to be to get some money, just to get some money. And I've always been in sales since I'm 28 years old. So I've been in sales since I was 17. Mm. So I love sales. Just the thing about it, though, is I want to do something different. So I wanted to be a trainer. So when I started LA Fitness, they hired me as a sales counselor. My thing was just to get get a job, get enough money to pay for my certificate to be a trainer. Mm. And I was there for a couple months. Cool, I I got I got enough capital. I was ready to get. I paid for my certificate. I got certified. I was all happy. So I wanted to transfer over departments. And longer story short, I tried my best. Uh, The vice president of the training department told me that I wasn't trainer material. So he didn't want to, he didn't hire me. Damn, doubted uh, from the beginning. Yeah, so he told me I wasn't okay. trainer material and I did the, and I was like, so I was bothered by it, but my biggest thing was, okay, something, someone tells me that, I'm going to prove them wrong. And that's yeah. how I ended up at the other uh, corporate gym that I was at for three and a half years. Three and a half years. And now you are part of, we can name you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're so, a part of South Made Training Facility yeah. out there in West Covina, right? Yeah, West Covina, West California. Covina. So how's that, that change? Obviously the... You know, I, we don't want to badmouth them or anything, but, like, the rumors, and I love being transparent. I love being honest. Like, there's people that, that go and train there, you know, especially if you want to take your training to a next level, yeah. it's the perfect opportunity. Of course. Because that is just a training trainer facility to grow your brand, grow mm-hmm. your fitness uh, portfolio, and to be something different. Mm-hmm. And you've been there how long now? I've been there a little over a year. I haven't, I, yeah, it's crazy, right? So I've only, I started in July of 2020. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I started there and I left my corporate job that I was there for three and a half years. Correct. And it was a great time. It was, it was great. And then COVID hit. So COVID changed everything, obviously for everyone. Yeah. And it changed me completely. It changed the fitness industry big it time. It really did. It, it, in my opinion, it actually made it, it made it go to a different level in terms of it just made it go higher. So the original plan was for me to leave my corporate job and I was going to be a cop. That was the original plan. Mm. And I went to Las Vegas. I was going to move to Vegas. And my fiance at the time, who was my girlfriend, we were going to move. I passed all my tests. I passed my physical, my written test. I passed everything. And then COVID hit. So when COVID hit, it just changed everything. So Las Vegas wasn't... Uh, taking out-of-state applicants just yet because there was so much all the rules and all that good yes, stuff. Yes, yeah, there was yeah. so much restrictions. And what I did was I was like, okay, cool. I'll do the self-made thing in the meantime and just to, you know, get some money because gold um, wasn't um, open yet. So I left and um, I got furloughed because, remember, we got shut down, went back to work, and then the shut gyms got again. shut down again. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. So I left Gold's and then I um, went started at self-made. I started at Self Made, and when you're at Self Made, you're an entrepreneur. You have to be. You're um, self employed. You don't have anything to fall back on. You <laughs> mess up, it's your fault. Yeah. And fun, the funny, I always tell my fiance was that when I started at Self Made, I didn't um, think of myself as an entrepreneur. I just didn't, I just did it just to get enough money in the beginning. Yeah. And then after a couple of weeks, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm self employed. <laughs> like, I don't got anybody to fall back on but me. 
So I was doing it in the meantime, a couple months, and then I just fell in love with everything self-made. I love the brand. I just, I was like, you know what? I want to be an owner. I was like, I want to be an owner. So I just grinding. I was like, I've been, uh, my fiance knows this. I was working seven days a week for a little over a year. Jesus. Uh, Monday through Sunday, uh, 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. Believe it or not, 3 a.m. So if I get to work at 3 a.m., that means I have to wake up at 2. Correct. Because I'm a a time freak. My fiance knows, like, I'm very, like, I have to be on time. You're obsessive in that aspect. I hate being late. And I hate when my fiance is the total opposite. So we're just, (laughs) I'm trying to get her to do, like, you know, what I do somewhat. So I did my very best. I was doing it, doing it for a purpose. And then recently, I bought into the franchise. So South May Pasadena. 2022. 2022. So, yeah. So, yeah, as soon as uh, you posted, you know, South May 2022, Pasadena, I'm like, all right. I already know it, like, just knowing from, from your page, in my head, I'm like, well, this is a young entrepreneur making a big step mm-hmm. going into the unknown of the uncertainty of what could happen when owning a yeah. a business. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, you're, you're franchising out and everything, but it's still you. You know what I mean? So what I want to get into and what I want to ask, and I'm very curious, since you've only been there a year, you have other trainers that have been there longer, what do you think was that difference maker that you had that got you into this to this seat now? Yeah. Because you're going to be sitting at the big boy table with, <laughs> with the, the rest of, like, yeah. what is it, Chino Hills, West Covina, Corona, um, Corona. Um, Hollywood, shout out to Chris Saka, opening up Hollywood, that's coming next month, I'll be launching out, yeah. Jesus. So what's the difference maker? Um, I... I was just telling my mother-in-law this. I was like, I just, for me, ever since I started in the fitness industry, I just, I don't like the bare minimum. You know, the safe route is I would have stood at my corporate job, get that check every two weeks. Correct. But I I hate that. I I can't just stand just an ordinary lifestyle, like a nine to five clock in. I just, me, that's just not me. Yeah. I can't sit at a desk for eight hours. I just can't. If you see me working, I'm even when I'm training a client, I'm literally just moving around them. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just have to move. Yeah. I can't stay still. So the difference that I feel for me is that I've always worked with trainers. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of trainers that are, you know, doing great at self-made that Correct. I've brought from a corporate gym. Um, they're doing their business is great. I, when I was at my corporate job, I was just helping trainers out because I genuinely love this business. And I feel like trainers nowadays, they just need help. If you want to be a trainer, like everyone wants to be a trainer, more or less. You work out, you want well, how you want to be trainers. Um, and it's a great business, yeah. but there's more to it than just training people. And that's how it is. Yeah, because I, I think that's where, um, how you said, there. I think there was pros and cons of, of the whole pandemic. And if you were just posting you're working out, people turn into trainers. Mm-hmm. And it's not a bad thing, right? Because, you know, everybody goes to the gym with their friends and some of them know more than others. They help each other out. But yet the difference maker being an actual trainer slash coach is you got to know the ins and outs of what you're doing. Plus, I feel like you got to build that relationship with those type of clients. Yes. Because the only re- the only I feel like the only way they're going to stick with you for X amount of time after your contract is the service you give them, how you treat them, what, you know what I mean? Like how, mm-hmm. besides the results, I think you're always going to get results, obviously, with the work you put in, but the relationship that you build with somebody, mm-hmm. like, is the key component. It's everything, actually. You actually, literally, you hit it right the nail on the head. Like, it's all about your relationship with your clients. People buy from people they like. And that's, th- that's how it goes down to it. Like, if I go to, if I wanted the new iPhone 13, and let's say I don't know anything about it, Okay, yeah. I walk into T-Mobile. Okay, boom. I walk in there, and there's two associates. There's one associate that knows everything about the phone, Yeah. right? But they're a dick, or they're just, and whatever about it. Okay, and then you have this other associate who knows maybe about 50% about the phone, but as cool as hell, that person. makes you laugh, that's awesome. You're going to buy from that person yeah. because you genuinely like that person, and that's, that's how it is with anything. I have clients that have been with me for years, and since my corporate days, they've been with me for years. Because obviously they like me yeah. and they just keep going, keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, keep paying. So to kind of get back to the question you asked me, which is how did I get to this point? Yeah. I just genuinely like I love the brand and I want more for my life. I want more. The safe route. I was telling all my like my friends, that my family was asking me, the safe route is for me to be a trainer. That's a safe route. I've been doing it since 2017 now. I, it's a safe route. I'm good at it. I have my clients, and that's fine. It'll keep you but, good. It'll keep you afloat. But I don't want that. I don't want just the ordinary. My, I measure my life by chapters. You got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. I don't stop in chapter two. I just keep going. 
Facts. And it, it's a blessing and a curse because my fiance knows that I'm all about business. So she knows that it, I don't want to just open up one self-made. I want to open up many. Then I want to open. I don't want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. And yeah. she supports that, which is very, we were just talking about last week is that I'm very happy that she supports me in this chapters of my life because no one's going to stop me from hitting my goal. My goal was to be a trainer. If I had listened back in 2016 to the vice president that told me that I wasn't trainer material, I would have went back to, I would have stood at LA Fitness selling memberships. Correct. So that's what separated me was I needed something different and I love the brand. Facts. And I genuinely just want to help people. And now self-made, it gives you that platform of genuinely helping trainers out. Yeah. Facts. And that's the, that, that's the biggest thing is these are all entrepreneurs. And every trainer that I come across it in any self-made, Facts. these are business owners. So you have to, you have to like carry yourself as a business owner. So what would you say your, call it like your two, two top qualities that you need to transfer from being an entrepreneur slash trainer to being an entrepreneur slash business owner, mm -hmm. Com like completely owner of a business now. So now instead of you just worrying about you getting the money, now you're worrying about a team getting their money. Yeah. So what what do you what would you say is two things or three that makes that difference? Um, no excuses. That's cliche, but and I use this Facts. analogy all the time, right? You can't prevent bad things from happening in life. You can't. No. Um, it's it just bad things are inevitable. Even it, I'll give you a good example. In 2020, I was working. We were I was working at South May West Covina, and we were in Alec County. So, you know, public health would come and we would have to go. We would, we moved all of our equipment outside, outside that's, that's, you know, and that. shout out to Jason, Jason, uh, Jason Tam, you know, he taught me observing him, right? He's the owner of South May West Covina. He taught me more or less how to maneuver. So when I'm outside, when we moved outside, it freaking sucked. You think about how cold it is right now. We were outside last year. I had gloves, I had two sweaters, and I had a beanie, and I had my hood on all the whole yeah. time, right? I did this for about a month and a half. We did this. We were training people outside when the fires were going on in the summer, too, when it was freaking hot. We were, we were just maneuvering. And that taught me more or less that you have to be able to pivot in business. Mm -hmm. So I fully expect that the route that I'm going in right now, it's not going to go to plan. There's going to be things that are going to happen that are out of Bumps my control. Bumps in the road, for sure. And this is my line that I always use, and my fiance hates it and loves it. Let's see. It is what it is. How do I maneuver around it? So how do I fix it? Correct. So when bad things happen in business, even in my own personal training business, okay, I can, um, it happened. For every problem, there's a solution. Right. I think nowadays the problem with people now is that they, when a bad thing happens in relationships, in business, in your own personal life, they like dwell in it. And I just don't get that. Like, if something bad happens, you can fix it. Facts. There, there's, a, there's a solution. You know, you have a bad relationship. You're a girl or a guy. Oh, my God, my boyfriend did this. Oh, oh my God, my girlfriend's doing this. Yeah. Right, like, fucking do something different. Yeah. Leave them, you know. Yeah, and, oh, my God, I love him. Oh, my God, I love her. Like, just leave them, <laughs> you know. And now I'm going into the relationship side. But in business, you have to be able to maneuver. And that's the biggest thing yeah. that, I, that I recommend people but it, to do. But it's, like, the similar to, to what, like, what we're just saying and, and picking back off, off of what you said is right now everybody is full of – of excuses. Mm -hmm. Everybody is is ready to stop what they're doing because X X thing happened, Y thing happened, and like, oh well, if that's the case, then I can't I cannot do it. So what do I do now? Oh, let me just stay safe. Let me stay there. Instead of like, all right, figure figure a solution out. Yes. Move forward. If it's not working out, on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what? What? Yeah. Really quick, we're adjusting, we're adjusting. <laughs> yeah, just this it. mic. It's a little falling a little bit. No, you're good, you're good. It's all right. It's all good. A little technical difference, but no, you're good, we're good. No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. It's what makes the show pretty good because we're still on. Yeah, we're good. Just a little, all right, here, there we go. We're good. Perfect. Uh, yeah, just bring it like right there. We're good. We're chilling right here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. That was Dylan and Cindy checking <laughs> on us. Aubrey caught it too, so we're. <laughs> yeah, that, I know. I see them. I'm all like messing with them. Nah, definitely. I mean, it. The beauty about this is it's just organic. You don't cut any we don't cut anything out. Everything we say is just on. Yep. Why? Because if you start cutting things out, it just it doesn't make it authentic. It doesn't mm -hmm. make it original. And everybody sitting here, you know, you could tell by your energy, you know, you are we are who we are and that's and that's whether you love us or hate us, hey, this is what you get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So 
So going into, you know, transferring business, you know, congratulations. Now that you're going to open that soon enough. So stay tuned to that. Um, Relationships. You touched on a little bit, but, you know, us, you know, youngsters, 26, 22, 23, you know, we're all curious. I'm curious. How do you now manage your relationship? You got, you have have a fiance now. Yes. So (laughs) marriage before 30, basically. So what, how does that transition? Not transition, but how does that, how did you make that work? A lot of learning and a lot of compromise uh, in mm. any relationship, but you learn it even more when you, go, when, when you want that next step. Is me and my fiance, we live together. We live in, in a house in Gladora. And, you know, it's not like a normal relationship where, like, let's say you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, they piss you off. You can just, oh my God, let me alone. And they just hang up the phone. They right. don't live with you. Well, you, well me, I, she lives with me. And so you can't really just escape that. So my biggest thing was she, I knew she was the one the moment I wanted to propose to her, right? But I, it solidified it even more to me when I was working every single day because when I would get up at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., 2.30, all these different times, I would get home and I'm beat. Like, I am beat. Yeah. I was working every day, and that schedule was tough. So I would I would have to go to bed early. I would probably be in bed by 6, 6.30, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. There are sometimes I ain't even going to lie. I was in bed by 5.30, right, because I was so tired. And mind you, I always tell people, my eight hours a day is different than a normal eight hours a day, meaning I have eight clients, right? Let's say I do, let's say I do eight hours. That's eight hours of a different people, different personalities. So me, like, okay, we're cool. We're talking about live, cool. The next client after you is more conservative, more calm. The next client after you is more, a little, little more talkative. It changes every hour. Therefore, mentally, you have to adapt Correct. to that personality. Yeah. You do. To keep the conversation going, to keep the whole session going. That's how it is. So I was tired. I was beat. I was exhausted. And she was understanding. I would get home. You know, she would feed me, whatever, and I'll fall asleep. I would be tired. I'd be like, I can't go out. We wouldn't, we wouldn't go out as much. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't go with family that much because I'm so tired. So she taught me. She showed me a lot right there. And now where I'm this in, in this new chapter of my life, I have a trainer at SoftMade that works with me. She trains a lot of my clients now. She trains a lot of my inquiries because I just can't do that anymore. I have my new business. Transferring in. And transferring over. So I have her. Her name's Gabby. She just trains a lot of my clients, and she's a big help. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now without her because I just can't handle the workload and open up a gym at the same time. So to, to get to the your question, now I make sure that time that I have, which is when I'm off of work, I spend with her. Um, the weekends, I have weekends off now. Before, I did not have weekends off. Yeah. I would go home. Now I go home. Baby, what do you want to do? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Now she tells me what she wants to do, and we do it. So that's what, what I do now to make her feel that I'm meeting her in the middle because she could only handle that schedule for so long. If I was doing that schedule yeah, still, for sure, it's hard. It's a really hard schedule. Probably wouldn't be there in the position. I wouldn't blame her. I, I mean, I wouldn't blame her if she, would, if she couldn't handle it anymore because it was a tough schedule. So, and... Um, kind of being a little more cheese also, but <laughs> you think if, you know, all respect to you guys, but at one point someone, she told you, hey, you need to give this up in order to keep us, would you give it up? No. She knows that. So she's going to hear this. So she she knows that because she knows my, I would do, if she had told me that, that she, that when I was working every day, that, hey, I can't handle the schedule anymore. I told her from the beginning uh, when I first started doing it, that I have a purpose. It's a, it's a temporary sacrifice. And that's what it was. It was a year of doing that. And I told her that. And she agreed to that because she knew. Now, if it went past that, that's a little different. But right. she, my fiance is very understanding and she knows. But she knows that nope. I don't care who it is. If, you, if I can't get to my goal, I can settle. I can compromise. But I'm going to be unhappy. And if I'm, I'm going to carry that unhappiness as years to come, years to come, and it won't be a good marriage. It won't be a good relationship. Good. And I don't, comp, I don't settle. I don't. I need, I, I need to hit my goals. Yeah. I need to hit the business goals that I have in mind. Because if, if that was the case, like I mentioned to you, I would still be at Alley Fitness or I would still be at the last job that I was at, um, at the last corporate gym that I was at. And it's just it wouldn't have been good, and I needed more. I think that's, that's like a big difference maker. For anybody in a relationship, especially in the ages that we're in, mid-20s, 18s, and stuff like that, because every when somebody's trying to chase a dream, every, when everybody's trying to like chase a dream and stuff like that, 
we always tend to compromise. We always tend to yep. make the other person happy, which is meaning sacrificing what we do, sacrificing our happiness for their happiness. And two or three years from now, there's no more. Yep. You guys break up. There is nasty relationships. How you said unhappy. Um, I think I've said it in the last two or three podcasts that our generation or in this age group, we have a higher rate of divorce than to keep yep. to keep a marriage. Because, I mean, we I think we've all seen it all around us that you get married within 18 to 21 and you love that person. And then two, three years later, yeah. boom, divorce. And going back to parents' house, doing whatever you're doing back. And it's like, oh, got to start all over. Yep. Again, nothing against anybody. But, you know, the reason I ask you is because I heard it earlier this week that in order for me... If I give up my dream to make you happy, then you're probably not that person for yep, me. Exactly. Because that, and I, I've, I've said it even myself, if I give up on this just to make you happy, maybe in, in six months, a year, I want to do yeah. something else, you're going to make me give that up again. Yep. And how we are, we're not, we don't settle for what people want to give us. You know, how you said earlier, if I settled for what that guy told me that I'm only good for, we wouldn't be in this position to yep. where now 2022, we're about to make a big change. Exactly. You know what I mean? So when you hear the word happiness, what, is, what does that remind you of? Oh, man, that's a good question. So Hell I yeah, I know. I thought about it right <laughs> now. I was like, hmm, what sounds like happiness. a good question. <laughs> I, would, I would say this happiness, it, it's peace to me. Mm. Peace. Because when you're happy, you're, that's how, that's what happiness means to me. Is like you're, you're very peace, you know, and I was happy at, my corporate my corporate job that I was at before, but at a certain point, I knew that I was settling. Yeah, and I was then I lost that happiness, and that's kind of what you're, what you're talking about. Where you know, cool, I give up my dream, eh, but I'm not happy anymore. And my last year at that corporate gym was pretty bad. Um, I was overworked. They saw me as a dollar sign. They wanted me to do a lot of these things that was um, unreasonable. I'm not, I hate excuses. That's something about me. I, I hate excuses and I hate complainers. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. I hate complainers. Talk the truth, homie. Talk the truth because complainers and are every everywhere. Every freaking thing. I cannot stand people that complain. Okay. Now, if you like complain, like, you know, event, that's a little different. No, but when it's like a constant complaint, I, yeah. I cannot stand that. So I wasn't, even when I was there, I wasn't complaining. I was just like giving them reasons why it's, I can't, why that number or why that certain thing couldn't be hit. Mm -hmm. So to get into deeper, my last year there, COVID hit, um, they called me back to go to back to work. And mind you, let's keep it real. You know, at that time, unemployment was paying everyone a lot of money. Hell you know, yeah. EDD was the real MVP on that one. You know, they really were. <laughs> it was a great one. Yeah, there was an ultimate yeah. like child support check. And <laughs> that was awesome. So when I got called back to go to work, I'm immediately going to make less because now EDD was paying me more. Correct. But I was like, you know what? Let me go back to work. I went back to work. It was just a mess. Like mask, right? And gloves. gloves and I, I was like, what the hell? So I was still taking in the chin, still taking in the chin. And um, my last week there, they called me to the office. They called me to the office, and I, I was on a Zoom call. And I had the highest rank there. Um, and they called me into the office. Hey, they're, hey, we're going to demote you. I'm like, for what? They're like, they're, uh, because supposedly I didn't hit this sales number that I was supposed to hit. And, I'm, and this was before COVID. So they're like, oh, yeah, you didn't hit this number. I'm like, what the hell? So I know my numbers really well. I'm in business. I know my numbers. Even back then when I wasn't in business for myself, I still know my numbers. I'm like, no, no, I hit my number because X, Y, and Z. And I was educating them and I was showing them. And they were dumbfounded. They're like, oh, shoot, he's right. I was like, oh, okay. Um, no, we just, we just want what's best for you. <laughs> yeah, what all this BS. And I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. So I'm a very, I, I let things roll off my shoulder, but I don't forget. So I walk out of that office and I'm like, wow. These guys were gonna demote me. If I didn't know my numbers, I would have been demoted. And I took that as disrespect. I took that as disrespect. To. I come back. You call me back, right? Like to come, like okay, go ahead and come home now. We're, we're open. We got you. Yeah. And then, like, 
I, I mean, my friend use this analogy a lot, and I just yeah. it's our analogy. They they literally wanted to clap my cheeks. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's the analogy we use all the time, right? <laughs> like, that's what we, like, like I was like I was really about to get my cheeks clapped, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> And now you can use that one for your next one, but cheeks clap. That's a that's trademark, okay? That's Pasadena's trademark. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> that was that's a good one. Yeah, I mean it's like how you say it in Spanish. They're trying to they're trying to uh, you know do sin saliva. The, straight up, man. I was like <laughs> I was like, damn. I was sin like, saliva. give me something. Not even nice, bro. Not yeah. even like work me up to it. It's just like well, like fuck straight, you. like bam. Yeah. Take not, me out to <laughs> <laughs> who's the president <laughs> they're like damn he didn't take me out to dinner i was like damn girl chill so i got called so i i walked out of the office and i was so hurt because this was three and a half years that i've gave this company everything i helped yeah. bring trainers up that i didn't even get paid extra i just i generally wanted them to help to help yeah. them i was like man these guys are really gonna double me i go home and i'll forget i'm sitting at the table with my with my fiance my girlfriend at the time i was like man i was like you know what like it's like this thing they tried to de demote me i can't believe these guys and i remember you know jason uh tam he's been he was trying to get me there for over a year bro and he's the best salesman i've ever met mind you best salesman i've ever met and we were, he was dming me for over a year bro like like i call it a sales foreplay where he's not asking for the sale but he's like hey hey hey, hey yeah. what about me it's he's just, warming you up for yeah sure. like straight up and the rest is history he got me there and I put in my two weeks, you know, and then me and all my clients, we bounced. And a couple weeks later, you know, they got shut down again. So uh, all my other friends bounced. I made sure to bring them all over. And I'm thankful for my years there. I'm thankful because they kind of gave me a It book. builds you. You know, you can't. I think if you say, oh, well, fuck, I regret doing this and that. It's like, hey, you got to think about it. That Because you had to go through that process, whatever the amount of time was, it builds you in a certain way to now where you're in the position you're in. You remember everything you learned back then, which it was whether it was good or bad, you learned it and now you're using it where you're at now. Yes. Because I mean it would be pretty naive and, and complete stupidity of us to not learn from from our yes, past. No exactly. matter what job, no matter what relationship, friendship, um, scenario that happened, you just gotta learn. Mm -hmm. With learning, hey, you can progress to the later on and, and you can elevate. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you want to do the same thing over and over and over and hope for a different outcome, it's never going to change. So, uh, damn. That yeah. was. That's, and that's how I came to be. That's how everything has, you know, it's very cliche, but how everything happens for a reason. And it yeah. just, it, it really is true. And you don't realize it until after you're like, oh, that's why this happened. Yeah. And that's exactly why I found, oh my God, that's why this happened. And it was a maneuver. All of 2020. It, it, honestly, and I, and I know 2020 was a, was a tough year for a lot of people. Fuck yeah. And I and I know that a lot of people lost their businesses, a lot of people lost their jobs, a lot of family members passed away. I lost my grandmother in COVID, um, in 2021. But for me, 2020 uh, would always go down as the year of decisions. And I made a decision to leave. And I left and I never looked back and people were like crazy. Oh my God, you're going to start your personal training business in yeah. COVID when the governor was so anti gyms, got to shut them down. You got to shut them down. You got to shut it down. And I was like, no, I was like, I'm going to start it. And I started it and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And 2020 just taught me a lot how to maneuver. And now that I'm going into this next chapter, I, I, I mean, if I can handle that, I can handle anything. And it's going to be a lot of maneuvering in Pasadena. Uh, and it, it's it's the truth and i and i understand that Facts. now but 2020 taught me even more how to maneuver we're outside cool it's raining figure it out because it was raining i have videos on my phone when it when it was raining mind you and we're outside bro like yeah, we're outside yeah. You're in the rain it. and i had to figure it out and i just figured it out and my yeah. i don't have i have i guess it's good skin i guess but when I was in the cold, my, my knuckles were cracking, my arms, like the skin was cracking. It was so bad. And my fiance was like, some lotion. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She was like, oh, you're like an alligator right now. I'm like, yeah. well, then rub me up, girl. Damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's essentially how it was. Oh, fuck. So it just a bunch of maneuvering, honestly. And it 2020 taught me a lot. And it was my best year, I think, ever. Just because it taught me so much. It brought, I got engaged in 2020. Um, 
I'm, uh, it taught me how to, I, I opened up my business and in one year now I'm opening my own self-made and it's just awesome. Let's talk about motivation and inspiration. When you hear those two words, who comes to mind and what comes into mind? So motivation, uh, a better life for me and my future family and my fiance, right? Yes, my, that's my motivation is I want to be able to, I'm 28. My goal is to retire by 40, right? Even sooner if I can. Therefore, in the business world, you need more um, businesses. Correct. You need more, it's called passive income, you need businesses paying you. So that's my goal is to really build it. I have my training business, who's, it's still, my goal is it's still going to stay, even I'm an owner. Yeah. Um, motivation is my fiance, going to be my wife, my future family, my kids. Yeah. And what was the other question? Inspiration. Inspiration. I. Who comes to mind when you, when you hear that word? My inspiration. dad. My dad. My dad is a very, very hard, hard worker, and he taught me a lot at an early age how to work hard. My dad is in the medical field. He's a phlebotomist, so he was calling himself Dracula, you know, taking the blood. Yeah. So he, when I was a kid, I was like, I'll never forget this, and I always tell him this. When, he, when I was younger, right, I was the, I know, I'll never forget when he told me this. I'm, I'm laying on my stomach playing video games, right, and my dad's getting ready to work. Uh, this is like at... 3 30 4 o'clock yeah right so my dad will my dad would work 7 to 2 30 then he would walk across the street right because he'd be working downtown la he would walk across the street work at a hospital and from 3 to 11 so he was working basically all day shit. 7 to 11 p.m that's a long shift yeah so it got to one point he's getting ready to go to work right we're at home i was like dad why do you work so much i'm like i think i think i was like 13 or 14 he looks at me he's like look when you get older you're going to realize why I do everything I'm doing right now. You're going to have a family. Yeah. You're going to have your own mouth to feed. You're going to realize why I'm doing everything. I was yeah. like, no, I'm trying like that. I'm just trying to play my WWE, you know? And years go on. I'm like, ah, that's yeah. why. Yeah. So inspiration, my dad would work. My dad was a workhorse. My dad would work. And my mom was too. But I lived with my dad. And my dad was, my mom was a very hard worker. Yeah. My dad, but my dad would work all day. Like six days a week, yeah. Overtime, holidays. He would work so much, and not because he was money hungry. As you know, my dad's very open about it. Is at that time he didn't know how to manage his money, so he was in a lot of debt. So he would work a lot, and he wanted to provide. He wanted to get a new car. He had goals as well. So that taught me a lot how to work hard. Correct. Um, but that's my it. that's my inspiration was my um, dad. my dad. So. With let's let's talk about something good. Maybe the girls might look at us funny, but big wedding or small wedding? <laughs> I laugh because actually, believe it or not, my fiance wants a small wedding. Mm. She wants intimate. She just wants like she would be fine right now if we eloped. She would be fine for a small wedding. I'm actually the one that wants a big wedding. That's the funny thing about it. So when people ask me, it's like, oh, about your wedding. It's actually me the one that's prolonging it because I want a big wedding. Yeah. So I can, my thing is I can elope, right? I can, we can elope and I'll be happy with that. Drive through in Vegas. Right. Even that too. We <laughs> thought about that too. So sh we're fine with that. Right. But yeah. I know in a couple of years, I'm going to look back. I'm going to look back in our book and I'll be like, man, I wish my mom was here. Oh, I wish my dad was here. Yeah. Oh, I wish my brother was here. My, I wish my best friend was here. And that's what I don't want. So we're looking at a probably like a medium issue. I think she's the she's the one's like no don't don't not that many people. Yeah. So it's actually me. That's kind of it's it's funny how that works. I'm yeah, the girl. Did. I'm the girl on that one. And, <laughs> I mean, you want what you want, right? I guess yeah. So but compromise. W taking it back to like when you and your girlfriend first started dating, fiance first started dating. Who paid on the first date? Me, man. Damn. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but check there you go. But, but check this out. But check this out. Look. <laughs> so this, this is what people like. I always tell people, and it's kind of funny. So we've been talking about this like the last two weeks. Well, and now looking back on it, I got like the guy you have to pay. It's it's you have no choice. Even when a girl like, oh, let's go eat. Like you kind of have to pay because the girls, regardless, of the girls will be like, oh, yeah, like they'll bring out the little their debit card, you know, but they like have to trying pay. to put it, trying to put it yeah, on there, trying to like, I got this and barely putting it slowly, slowly. But, I got this. But check this out. If they pay right, they won't say anything, but they'll go home. They'll, like all the girls are right there. They're like, oh, my God, I had to pay with so-and-so and I'm not going to give them another chance. Yep. Like, it's going to happen, right? But the funny thing about it is me and my fiance, I actually, we've only been together for about a year and a half, mm. right? So check us out. So um, I met her when she was a member at the gym that I, that I worked at, my last gym, back in 2000. And uh, when I met her, I believe it was early 2019. Yeah. So we would talk, whatever, like a little flirting thing, stuff like that. So COVID happened, right? 
and I never quarantined. Like I was always out. Like I, I could not me. I don't know. Like, I don't want to, whatever. Like it was a whole messy year. Me personally, I couldn't stay away from people. Okay. So with her, uh, we, we, she added me on Instagram, whatever. That's how it started. And then we had our first date and when we had our first date, we had no choice, but to kind of like let our guards down in terms of, because this was at the height of COVID this was back in our first date was in April. Everything happened in March. So everything was hardcore shut down. Like, yeah. it's not how it was at the second show. It was the hardcore, cool. like, I live in Glendora, so if you're familiar with that area, like the San Dimas, like Sam's Club and everything, that was a, like, ghost town because everything was shut down. So it, we kind of had no choice but to have our guards down and it's like, get something small. So on our first day, we went to Chipotle. Saved me a lot of money because she's a very high-maintenance girl. Because if it was our first date, like, oh, my God, we would have probably... Went to a high-end restaurant, cost me a lot of money. It would have been this, you know how it is, like, in the dating world. You kind of, like, you could show how much you like them or you could show how much you like her. Yeah, like, if you take them to a high-end restaurant, that means you really like yeah. them and dig them. But if you take them to McDonald's, that just means, exactly. Uh, I try to get a happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But we had no choice but to go to that. No choice. We couldn't go anywhere else. Yeah. And we had no choice but to actually talk. You know? And we would go, go to my apartment, and we had no choice but to talk. Yeah. Because, you know, let's keep it real. Even... After the business happens, you got to talk to the person. And with hers, you, you had to talk. And I was like, oh, this girl's, this girl's actually a really cool girl. Yeah. And after the first, I think after the first week, or no, first couple of weeks, I knew I loved her. And this is a crazy thing about it. Mm. I, and, I, and I always tell people this. I, I, look, I'm tw- I was 27 at the time. I haven't had a real girlfriend since I was probably 19. Okay? So I was dating a lot. People are like, it's impulsive. Yeah, I was impulsive, right? But... It wasn't too impulsive to the fact where if I had this mentality of, oh, proposing right away, I would propose a long time ago, you know? But every other girl that I dated didn't give me that feeling, yeah. that, that comfort, that... <sighs> yeah, for sure. So, and that's what she gave me. So would you say it bags to like a... And you would say a funny quote, but like love at first sight, basically? Is it kind of that? Mm. Do you believe in that? I believe in that, with, but with me, it wasn't love at first sight. It was more like, I would say, peace at more sight because it was more like, like I, for this girl makes me go, like, drop my guard, right? Yeah. But after the first, like, week or two, I was like, I think after the first week, I was like, I, I was like, I was really liking her a lot. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, that is, like, not like me. Like, what, what would you think? What, what could you say was that difference maker? Like, what were you doing that made you say, like, Fuck, I do really like this girl. It was that because COVID, it was that intimate time where you guys would have, like, no choice but to, like, talk, hang out at the house, yeah. um, do, like, little stuff, like, little walk, like, stuff like that to where when you're first dating in the beginning, yeah. everyone has their guards up, you know? Like, a first date, right? If a girl's, like, if I tell a girl, like, let's say I'm single, right? And then my first date, hey, we, um, we should go get something and go back to my apartment. A girl's going to be, oh, my God, he wants to smash, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how, that's how it is, right? But rightfully so, because guy, I mean, <laughs> no, not to you. I was just like, yeah, I was just like, yeah. But sorry, at least, sorry, at least. <laughs> but rightfully so, right? I mean, any girl, you would think that, right? In yeah. COVID, in the beginning, that first couple of months, you had no choice, yeah, right? Because what else are you gonna do? Yeah. So you kind of have to like have your guard down, because you're like, okay, I really want to hang out with this guy, but I can't. We can't go here. Can't go nowhere. Yeah, definitely. Can't go. You gotta stay at home. You know, so, and that's why, kind of like uh, I said it before, it, it's funny, you know, throwing us guys under the bus. But when you just want something from a girl, you tell them, "Hey, you want to go out tonight?" And why, like, why can't we go out during the day? No, oh why God. can't we have brunch? <laughs> why do you want me? Why do you want to? <laughs> why do you want to pick me up at ten o'clock at night <laughs> and stay in your car and go to? <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're right because during those times we had no options. Yeah. It was either you be being <laughs> sitting in your car or sitting outside in your house or inside, whatever the case was. But at least here it wasn't an option. Obviously, if we went to Orange County, it was a different story out there. It which... was, but not in the beginning when we were dating them. Mm, so yeah, not yeah. in the beginning. Cause, oh, yeah, because you said it was right at the beginning. March 17th, right, yeah. is when uh, the governor, I think it was March 16th or 17th. I think it was 16th. He announced uh, the, the stay, stay at home orders, right? The next day, uh, the corporate gym that I was at got shut down. That's when everything magnified even more. So you got talking about March, and then you go into April. Yeah. Right. So it's a whole it's a whole different thing. So to kind of piggyback on like you know talk about life, right? It's a funny thing, right? So I had these rules, right? When my single AJ, a single, right? You would not get me out for brunch. Me and my fiance, we have this argument and playful argument all the time. 
she's all about brunches. She's like, I would have got you out on, your, on the first date for brunch. Like, nah, you would not have got me out. I had these rules. We're going to hang out after 6 p.m., okay? <laughs> and to get even real, like, in general, like, you know, you got three dates. <laughs> three dates to cough something up, you know? That's how guys think. And, and most guys, like, they're, oh, no, I don't think, no, they think like that, right? So, yeah. like, that's how, that's how I was, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> the funny thing about it is that I always tell, like, you know, like, like um, I'm going to give you a good example. When I give advice, right, I have clients and I build rapports with them for years, right? So, like, oh, that guy, a lot of my clients are female clients. Oh, so-and-so did it, so-and-so did that, right? Oh, so-and-so likes me. I was like, this is the number one thing, how you know if a guy likes you, okay? First date, you meet him there during the day. During the day. Facts. Right? If yeah. he says yes, he likes you. If he's like, no, then he just wants one thing. And that's usually how it is. Yeah. So that's my advice to all you guys. <laughs> 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 We're writing it down. Write it down. Like, oh no, God. I mean, it, yeah, because what you just said right now, and it's funny, you know, hopefully my amigas here don't look at me different, but it, it's true. Like when a guy doesn't get what he wants within the first one, the next, you, a lot of guys leave that time and we're just like, fuck, man. Yeah. And start hitting up whoever else. <laughs> but it's how you said, when you know you're, you have the one. Yep. Every, all that doesn't matter. Yep. Hey, let's go out at this time. Let's do this. Hey, you only want to do this? Cool. We just do this. And it's not being like so overboard and so touchy. So like overwhelming at, at the first time. It's just like, kind. I think about it like, let it flow. You know, if the vibe is good, the conversation is good. Um, the connection will be there. Yeah. But you cannot you cannot make a connection work when, I mean, there's really none. Yeah. I mean, to each their own. You know, there's times and there's things that everybody's just there for one thing. You get in, you move on. But sometimes, and, and hopefully everybody finds it at one point, you find the one. Yep. And now you're in that position and, you know, position to where a lot of us, a lot of people look into having a fiance, being a business person, supporting each other in whatever moves you guys are making. Mm -hmm. So, and I know she, uh, your fiance isn't here, but whatever she does for her line, how has, how have you supported that? Like, like what is that? Everything you got going on, do you still make that time to like also support her yes. in that aspect? So our, my biggest thing with her was when we, um, she actually has a meal prep service. Mm. So it's just kind of a good yin and yang, you know, and it kind of just happened. Uh, when I, in uh, 2020, um, I was going to go through a meal prep company to get my food. Cause I was working every day. So when she, when, when, when I told her that, she's like, well, why am I going to, why are you going to pay for someone when I'm not, she wasn't working, right? So she wasn't working. She's like, well, why are you going to pay for someone when I can do it for you? Yeah. So she did it and bam. Nope. That food was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Right and, and right. he's honest. Honesty is key. He's all like, right? I'm like, I know. Nah. I was like, I was like that's what it was, huh? And she's gonna watch this, right? Her food is so much better now because she has so many customers now, right? But I was the guinea pig, right? And mind you, okay. So since everything happened so fast with us, the funny thing about it is that um, I didn't, I couldn't tell her all oh, your food, like, it's bad, you know. Yeah. So she would make salmon, which was dry as hell. She would make chicken, right? And we we salmon laugh about it now, right? The rice, oh my God, it was so bad. Watery all the time. We have a rice cooker, bro, right? And like, oh, still. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It was so bad. But I'll be honest, right? I don't know how to even do that shit, but I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> was so bad. It shit. was so bad. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I wasn't telling her anything, telling her anything. And then after like a month and a half, I was like, oh, baby. I was like, you know, if you can change this a little bit, change this. She's like, wait a minute. She's like, how does my food taste to you? I'm like, oh, it's, it's okay, you know? And, and no, it wasn't. And she finally got it out of me, and she started cooking a lot better. Then one of my best friends wanted her to cook her, um, his food. She said yes, she got better. And then it kind of just happened organically where mm, okay. now she just took off, and now she's the main meal prep provider for South Made at West Covina, South Made Chino Hills. And obviously when Pasadena opens up, she'll be the meal prep provider for South Made Pasadena. So I support that. My yeah. my biggest thing with her is even before um, her meal prep meal prep company is called Train and Fuel. Um, before it started, I had told her, I just want her to be happy, right? Nice. I'm a big believer in that and anything you do for your work, gotcha. just be happy. If you want to, if you want to, I told her like, if you want to flip burgers for a living, tell me that and I'll go do it, 
Now, if you want to be a stay-at-home wife, be the best stay-at-home wife you can be. The best stay-at-home mom. I just want her to be happy in anything she does. Yeah. So right now, she's happy. You're your own boss. She has a good business, and I'm very, very happy for her. So my biggest thing is supporting her as well. But her and I were having this, this discussion. We're in business, right? This is kind of going back to, like, the business side. She's in the kitchen. She's making a lot of meals. Like, last this weekend, she had, like, 115 meals, right? Shit. Now, if you cook for your own self, it's a lot of work. Imagine cooking that many meals. That's, like, 12 hours, like, of work. That's a lot of measuring, seasoning, all this That's stuff. Yeah. I help her with some things, but I won't, you won't catch me in the, cook, in the kitchen cooking, for cooking, right? And it's not because I don't want to help. It's not because I don't want to support. I'm a big believer at, um, you know, you have to learn at your own pace. You have to learn yourself, right? So I'm, I'm, my thing with her is I have to have that middle ground of, yes, helping her, but not helping her too much. And then it would, I just don't want her to rely on me in that way because I have so much stuff going on. Like, let's say, let's say I'm in there chopping potatoes, chopping, blah, 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 right? And then I have my own businesses to run. Sometimes she won't always have me there, yeah. right? And my biggest thing is just figure it out. And with her, you know, I told her that. I was like, yeah, you know, I'll help you, but you also need to figure out your own because she would have. What about what I'm about to say? When I was outside training people in, 40, in 35 degree weather, I never once asked her for help. She would have helped me, right? She would probably would have took off some of my workload. She would have helped me, but it wasn't her responsibility. Yeah. It was my responsibility to figure it out. And that's what I did. And same thing with her. So I kind of have to find that middle ground with her because, you know, you know, women are like, you know, sensitive. So I don't want to hurt her feelings because she's told me, right, and if she was here just getting, keeping it real, oh, you hear my feelings when you say it's okay, cool. Like, let me, let me adapt. Let me help. I call myself, like, I'll be like a little boy. I'll, like, I'll put lids on for you. Like, I'll do, like, little stuff to kind of help her out and decrease that workload from her. Yeah. But for the most part, she's a business owner as well. And I know in business, you have to figure it out. You got to have a thick skin. Like, uh, the friends, great friends, partners now that we have here, I mean, them individually is they have a thick skin. They know what it takes to to go through business and, yep. you know, in a business aspect. And we, we've had this conversation many times now um, is this, we don't we don't like seeing someone in power like that that has the same attitude as we do, which is we're tough. We get to do this. We figure this out. Yet when we meet somebody else in, a, in, the, in the other gender that is the exact same way, we're just like some of us are scared. You know, some people are like, ah, oh, no, nah, I can't do that. But it's how, how you said, if you got to figure it out on your own, then you won't ever depend on anybody else. Yep. But when you have a support system, great. You guys, you can lean on them for some, for some things. But for the most part, like, you know they can handle it on their own. Mm -hmm. And that's just who we are now and who, like, we built this. We've all learned in our own way. We've all gone through whatever we've gone through. And now we, how, how you are now, we're all sitting at the same table because of who we built ourselves to be. Yes. And shit, being in any industry and in business, entrepreneurship, if you don't have a thick skin, you, we ain't going to survive. Because yep. we go into what people say about you, what people think about you, what um, people portray that you're going to be, or they say, oh, this is who you're going to be at this point. Yep. It's like, man, if I worry about what, what you think, then I will never even be happy with myself. Man, you're, you're hitting some stuff that it literally we were talking about. And especially in this new chapter of life that I'm in now, yeah. you get a lot of haters, right? You get a lot of people that want to tear you down. It's very cliche, right? But I, am, I let things roll off my shoulder pretty easy. I don't mm -hmm. take things personal. I always, I always tell people, you either think two ways. You think emotionally, you think logically. Your emotions are gonna, will lie to you. Logic, it won't, right? So I do business with people that I, that I don't really care for, right? And that's not because I don't like them. It's just I, I, I just don't care for them. But guess what? It's a business. It's a business at the end of the day. The years that I go on when I open up these gyms and stuff like that, I'm not going to like every single person that I come across. I get it. But I'm not going to I'm going to think logically. I'm like, hey, well, if I still need to do business with them, I need to do business with them. So yeah. that's my biggest thing is in, in, in entrepreneurship, you have to have a thick skin. You cannot be overly emotional because if you're overly emotional, if you let your emotions lead you, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. And that's my biggest thing is always thinking logically. Whenever I, me and my fiance will talk and talk about business or something happens in her business or my business, I always, try, I was, I always do this. I'll calm down. I'll like, if, I, if someone really gets me mad, I'll walk away. Let me breathe a little bit. I'll go back and I'll give you an answer logic. Right. I will not never give you an answer emotionally. 
Because that, that your emotions will fail, your logic won't. Damn. That's a good uh, way to put it because when we do when we do think about it in, in that aspect, I mean, say we're arguing with whoever we're arguing with, and sometimes we say things out of she can't even figure it out. Cindy, what are you doing, bro? You got this. You got this. One come more, on. Come turn on. It one more time. <laughs> there we there go. There it is. And we have six security out here in this place. Um, yeah, so when you're arguing with somebody, you it happens to everybody. I've gone through it. I'm sure everybody else has. You say things out of spite, out of emotion at that time. Yeah. And then 24 hours pass by, Damn. and you're just like, hey, I'm sorry for what I said. I forgot it, yeah. But it's just like. Did you say it because you meant it, or did you just say it because you weren't thinking about it? Yeah. Like, what you were really saying. It's like when you're drunk. Like you, 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 ah, but they say, like, when you're drunk, you tell the truth. Yeah, I believe that sometimes. You know, you tell the truth. Like, you really say how you really feel without really knowing you're saying it. Yeah. So, the next day, again, you can never argue. I always say, you can never argue with a drunk person because there's no winning. Yeah, there there's no, no rational. There's like, no winning. Not at all. It's, <laughs> it's going to lead to a fight. It's going to yeah. lead to... Things throwing, whatever the case is, may be, but it's how you said. It'll take twenty four hours. Figure it out. Like, you know, yesterday down. we were at a, at a we we're gonna go buy a car yesterday, and I told the guy I was like, hey, you know what? Like, sounds like you're giving me a sort of a good deal. Yeah, it wasn't a good deal. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna think about it twenty four hours because you know it's a big. Why? Why? What could I do to make? I was like, no, there's That's nothing you can do right now. Is this sales gene, bro? I'm like, I just need to take twenty four hours, yeah. but. Dude, I used to work with T-Mobile, same thing. You know how it is. Bro, I, I got you for free. Nothing was ever free, but yeah. <laughs> you know, but it yeah. always comes back. But this guy was getting like just so irritated because I just use a simple word as no. Yeah. Hey, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'm going to give myself 24 hours because yeah. I'm very impulsive. You give me whatever, I'm just like, ah, fuck it is what it is. 24 hours later, I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But I'm like, fuck it is what it is. So... I think that leads into relationship also. Like, there's always a time that you need to step away. Yeah. Because if you stay in that same situation at that moment and things are not going the right right way, quote unquote, it leads into an even worse moment. Instead of hey, let's let's think rationally. Yeah. Let's think, you know, calmly without our emotions, so we can work on this whatever we need to work on. So, I think. That's a good good way to put that shit. So let, I want to end on this. It, what would you tell a 10-year-old you? Oh, man. 10-year-old me? 10, like 10, 12-year-old. Ah, man. So I was a uh, – the funny thing about it, when I graduated high school, I, I, I hated school. Mm. Uh, so you tell 10-year-old me. We all hate school. I freaking cannot stand. Oh, we all hate school. I freaking cannot stand <laughs> school, bro. I could, I hated it, right? I graduated high school with a 1.6. How the hell did I graduate? I do not know. Oh my God, you got to graduate. I do not know. It's like Kevin okay. Garnett, anything is possible. And literally, I don't know. I, I, do, I think they may, they may have felt bad over me or whatever it is, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I Maybe they felt bad for me, but probably, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I laughed about it because um, um, me and my fiance, right, we went to go pick up my transcripts because this is when I was going to be a cop. So this is, this is maybe a couple months I self-made, right? Because like I said, I was originally just going to be a cop. Yeah. And um, I got my, they require your transcripts. So I got my transcripts and I was like, hey, you know what, babe? I was like, I don't remember what I got. I'm not sure. Okay, let's check it. So they give you two envelopes. One you can open, one you can't. I opened and I looked. I was like, oh my God. So that I went to, I, I got a D in algebra. I went to summer school. And God, I still got a D, right? I'm like, what the hell? Like this stupid little kid. Why would you go? You get a D and then you go to summer school and you still get a D, right? Yeah. Or you even take a bigger out. And sometimes I, I went to summer school. So I got, math was my biggest thing. I hate, hated math. So got a D in algebra one year and then went to summer school, got an F, right? <laughs> stupid. I laugh about it now because it's funny. But my biggest thing is when I genuinely don't care for something, like even school. Yeah. Right? And that's his own separate topic. I... um. I won't apply myself, right? So if you take me back to that age, right, when I was in that mentality, yeah. is figure out what you want to do at a young age, right? So my biggest thing was in high school, they want to cram college down your mind. Fuck yeah. You go to college, go to college, go to college. When at 16, 17, 15, whatever, you're still figuring out life. Yeah. 
So what you want to be at 15 is going to be different than what you want to be when you're 23. And guess what? You're going to figure it out. You're going to go to school. You're going to, you're going to let's say I, go, I went to college. Went to college for a few years. Yeah, I'm going to end up like those people that have a bunch of debt that are not doing what they, what they went to college for. Mm-hmm. Oh, I changed my major like five times. I'm like, oh, my God. You put yourself in debt even more now. Yeah. Right? So, and there's no shade against anybody, right? For sure. My biggest thing is just figure out what you want to do at an early age. So a 10-year-old me, 12-year-old me, just figure it out at that age. If I had known what I wanted to do when I was 18, 17, 15, man, I would have had a better head start. Right? I'm still young, 28 years old, but I wish I would have. It sounds very cliche, like, but I'm going to extreme. Yeah. I wish I would have known now. What I know. What, yeah, what, what I know back then, or vice versa, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But I wish I would have known back then what I know now. Correct. But I didn't. So that's what I would tell myself. Stop being lazy and figure out what you want to do. Jesus. Hey, amen. I freaking hate lazy people. <laughs> I, I hate lazy people. So, so. hey, but it, appreciate you sharing all the knowledge Thank you, you have, you know, you got to, everybody has, if you're looking for trainers, this is one dude that obviously after hearing this whole podcast knows how much you invest. And again, I, I always say you cannot fuck with somebody unless you know how much they're investing into it and investing in, in you yeah. personally. So, you know, 2022 self-made Pasadena yes. is going to, is going to be out there. So we all got to stay tuned. Look out for that hit the subscribe hit the follow button follow everybody on this so episode 40 appreciate y'all peace